Most sea creatures aren't big enough to give you more than a tickle, and their first instinct is to swim away. And even if they could harm you, they really don't want to. They're just trying to mind their own business in their watery world. And yet, so many people fear them. It might be those nonsense thumbnails you keep seeing with ridiculous imagined sea creatures and big fish that don't exist. I'm going to show that the sea creatures themselves are mostly nothing to be afraid of, but at the same time I'll explain what really is truly terrifying about the sea. I spent much of my working life making films about the ocean, spending years seeking out curious creatures in the deep, so I've seen a lot of scenarios all over the world. I think that qualifies me to play the game of scary, not scary about the creatures of the deep and what goes on in the sea. And see if you agree with me what is and what isn't terrifying. I've got a traffic light of fear. Green is okay, amber, we're just starting to worry and red is just terrifying. So here we go. The telescope fish. The telescope fish with its googly eyes hunts small fish and plankton in the deep sea. Despite looking like it swam out of a sci-fi movie, it's about as scary to humans as a goldfish. More interested in its next snack than in giving you a fright. This picture which you see all over the internet is actually a badly decayed one taken by a scientist in the Smithsonian Museum. It's actually got super cool telescope lenses it's to spot its prey from a great distance as it looks up. And they do stand vertically, looking up in the water column, as this amazing encounter shows from an ROV belonging to the Monterey Bay Research Institute in California. So the telescope fish is absolutely harmless, even if you were to encounter one at a thousand feet down, which would be an incredibly rare event. So it gets a green on our traffic light of fear. But compare what seems to be a scary looking fish with something far more serious in the sea. Maelstroms and whirlpools. Maelstroms, like Salstromen in Norway, one of the biggest in the world, are like nature's washing machines on turbo mode. Fascinating to watch, but definitely not where you want to take a dip. Although terrifying, divers have gone in and survived, but several have not. And if you're unlucky, you get sucked downwards in the current and won't pop out until the water slows down, usually fairly shallow at about 20 feet or 5 meters. But I have a friend who was taken down to 90 meters, 270 feet near the seabed. Very luckily he was only there for a few seconds before he returned to the safe diving depths. But on normal air mixes, that depth can kill you. And then of course there's the number one fear, sharks. As the legendary underwater filmmaker Jacques Cousteau wisely said, never be complacent with sharks. He'd have said it in French, but anyway. It all depends on whether they're in feeding mode or not. And most of the time, they're just cruising around, minding their own business. They're just as afraid of getting hurt as we are. I once was with hundreds of hammerhead sharks and I accidentally knocked my air tank. And it was as if they were as scared as mice and they all disappeared. And if they think their potential meal might put up a fight, they'll swim away faster than you can say, Jaws. I've spent years filming sharks, often within a few feet of some pretty big ones, without a shark cage, but always following the advice of expert scientists that were with us. Sure, there are some like the great whites, tiger sharks and bull sharks, and oceanic white tips that pack a punch, and you definitely need to know what you're doing to dive with them. But the real danger comes when you can't see sharks at all, in cloudy water, at night, or when you're splashing around on the surface. Great whites can rock it up from the deep and take out an elephant seal in one bite. But that's when they're in hunting mode. And even tuna know this. I've seen them cheekily rub themselves on surfacing great whites to get rid of their parasites on the rough shark skin so they understand when you can be around a shark and when you can't. So surprisingly I think sharks as a whole deserve an amber warning light on the traffic light of fear, no more. So then you might think of venomous things in the sea like jellyfish. 
There's the Portuguese man of war, which, although jelly-like, isn't actually a jellyfish. It's a closely related thing called a siphonophore. They have long, venomous tentacles that can deliver a painful sting. Deaths are very rare, but they're usually caused by allergic reactions to the venom. So they're definitely on the red side of amber. <coughs> Is warm. So what's more scary than weird fish, whirlpools, sharks and the burning stings of man of wars? That's what we're going to find out. How about rogue waves? These are really unexpected, towering waves that can appear out of nowhere and they're caused by a combination of strong winds and currents during storms. Definitely not something you want to encounter on a leisurely sail and they're pretty inconsistent, they can come from nowhere that they're thought to be responsible for the sudden disappearance of large ships. And the largest ever recorded was 58 feet, 18 meters high. But unofficially, scientists think they can reach over 100 feet. It's definitely a code red. The giant isopod. I've got to admit, these oversized wood lice are really creepy, but they're harmless scavengers of the deep. They're more interested in cleaning up the ocean floor than in you, and so they get the green, harmless, go-ahead light. Tides. Tides can rise unexpectedly fast and have been known to trap and drown people. A tragic example is the Morecambe Bay cockle pickers incident in 2004, where 23 Chinese immigrant workers were caught by a tide. They lost their lives. Today, 20 years later, there's a touching memorial. The bay north of Liverpool is the largest area of mudflats in the UK, and on certain tides, the water comes in faster than you can run. That's a nightmare, so it's red. Fangtooth. With their oversized teeth and menacing appearance, fangtooths look like they belong in a horror movie. However, they're small, really small, only about as big as your hand, and live in the deep ocean, far from human reach. But they are feisty when they're caught, and we, and we had one in an aquarium once, and it, it ate the heck out of the aquarium brush that we used to keep the front of the glass clean. But really, it was just bluffing. So, it's a green on our traffic light of fear. Box jellyfish. These small but deadly jellyfish have venom that can cause severe pain and even be fatal. But they're definitely one to avoid if you're swimming in their territory in Australian waters. The stats say that 79 people have been killed by them since 1883 when records began in Australia. That's not a huge amount over a century. But still, its venom is said to be the most potent on earth and can cause death in five minutes as it locks the heart muscles if the dose is high enough. So it's a stop on this red light and wear protective wetsuits if you're in known box jellyfish waters. Clear water diving. This doesn't sound too bad. Surely it's harmless to dive in clear water. But in the open ocean far off from shore, it's often the case that you've got miles of water below you. Every little particle falls towards the seabed and leaves the surface water crystal clear. It's such a very clear water that you have no sense of up or down. Only your bubbles tell you which way you're going. I filmed in the Gulf of Mexico with two miles of water below and very quickly found myself at 50 meters and only the screaming of my dive computer stopped me from going further. You've got no sense of where you are and as you go much deeper, you get drunk from the nitrogen at high pressure in your blood. It's called nitrogen narcosis and it impairs your judgment and can be dangerous because you want to go deeper. It's very beautiful in that clear water. You and your buddy need to check on each other and watch which way the bubbles are going to know what's up. The clear blue water is red. Gulper eels. These are another deep sea creature. And the gulper eel might look like they belong to a horror movie too but they're actually just superbly adapted to their dark, high-pressure environment, about 600 meters or 1,000 feet down and more. It uses its impressive balloon-like mouth to suck in small prey like shrimp, squid, and, and tiny fish. It's only recently that it's been discovered that it does this. That's why it's got such a big, floppy balloon mouth. 
Despite its fearsome appearance, the gulper eel is only about two feet long and poses no threat to humans. In fact, the number of people who have encountered a gulper eel is really small because they live so deep in the ocean, far from where most divers venture. And the number of people who have been killed or even touched by one? Zero. So while they might look scary, these eels are just fascinating examples of nature's ingenuity and gets a green, non-scary traffic light rating. Pressure. Pressure at great depths is no joke. It can be far scarier than any deep sea creature. At depths of say around a thousand feet, the pressure is about 30 times greater than at the surface, which can do some serious damage to the human body, crushing air spaces in your nose and your head and your lungs and leads to conditions like barotrauma where the lungs can collapse altogether. Pressure at the deepest depths of the ocean, like the Mariana Trench, is mind-boggling. At around 11,000 meters, that's 36,000 feet down, the pressure is crushing. Over 1,000 bar or 15,000 psi, it's like having the weight of 100 elephants standing on your big toe. So how do deep sea creatures survive it? Unlike land animals, many deep sea creatures don't have air-filled spaces in their bodies, which prevents them from being crushed by the pressure. As you may know, liquid itself is not compressible to any great extent. And for example, fish like the gulper eel have gelatinous bodies and lack the gas-filled swim bladders which are used by fish in shallower waters for buoyancy. And that makes them more flexible and able to withstand high pressure. And yet another fascinating adaption in these deep sea fish is the presence of TMAO, trimethylamine oxide, in their tissues because tissues themselves get crushed and the cells under high pressure can't work. But with this compound, they can function normally in conditions that would be lethal to most other organisms. The Kraken. This isn't scary at all, because it doesn't exist. It's a legendary sea monster that has fueled many a sailor's nightmare, but it's purely a myth. The giant squid Archaeotuthis and its closely related cousin, the colossal squid, do exist and the kraken may have been based on these. So this doesn't even get a rating because it doesn't exist. Tsunamis. These massive waves are caused by underwater earthquakes and the displacement of the seabed and they can cause, as you know, widespread devastation. Early warning systems and evacuation plans are crucial for safety, and there's been much research on it, especially in Japan, where they're quite frequent. Tsunami itself is a Japanese word, of course. Sadly, tsunamis have killed thousands of people, making them the deadliest thing ever about the ocean. So it gets a definite red. I could go on, but you get the picture. It's the physical sea that can be deadly, not usually the creatures themselves. So don't take that clickbait and let these people scare you with their cheap thrills and thumbnails. The ocean's power from currents and waves to storms and pressure poses the greatest risk and respecting the sea and understanding its dangers is key to staying safe.